Today is November the 22nd. Does God change his mind? Let's find out together as we read Amos chapter 7. So we've worked our way through uh, the book of Amos, uh, formulas that he uses at the beginning of his book for three sins of Damascus and for four, I'll send fire. <laughs> uh, then we worked through his sermons and his sermons primarily dealt with Judah and Israel, their sins, their coming punishment, and the invitation to repent and do what's right. Now we come to a series of visions that Amos has, five specific visions. We're going to look at the first two today. In Amos chapter 7 verse 1, the sovereign Lord showed me a vision. I saw him preparing to send a vast swarm of locusts over the land. This was after the king's share had been harvested from the fields and as the main crop was coming up. In my visions, the, the locusts ate every green plant in sight. And I said, O sovereign Lord, please forgive us or we won't survive, for Israel is so small. So the Lord relented from his plan. I will not do it, he said. Then the sovereign Lord showed me another vision. I saw him preparing to punish his people with a great fire. The fire had burned up the depths of the sea and was devouring the entire land. And I said, O sovereign Lord, please stop or we will not survive, for Israel is so small. Then the Lord relented from this plan too. I will not do that either, said the sovereign Lord. So here Amos has two visions, and in the visions he saw complete destruction of the land of Israel, and he begged God to not do it, and the Lord didn't do it. Now, uh, we started with the question, does God ever change his mind? Certainly, uh, there are passages in which God himself says, I am God and not man. Uh, I don't change my mind. Numbers chapter 23 verse 19 says that. God is not a man, so he does not lie. He's not a human, so he does not change his mind. Has he ever spoken and failed to act? Has he ever promised and not carried it through? The book of Malachi, the last book in the Old Testament, says much the same in chapter 3, verse 6. There the Lord says, I am the Lord, and I do not change. That's why you descendants of Jacob are not already destroyed. Even in the New Testament, the book of James says exactly the same thing. James chapter 1, verse 17. Whatever is good and perfect comes down to us from God our Father, who created all the lights in the heavens. He never changes or casts a shifting shadow. So we have several verses that tell us that God does not change. And yet, even here in the prophets, what we saw here uh, in the book of Amos, God says, I'll change my mind. I won't do that. Jonah chapter 3 in verse 4, Jonah prophesied to Nineveh, 40 days from now Nineveh will be destroyed. Then the people of Nineveh repented and in verse 10, the book of Jonah says, when God saw what they had done, how they had put a stop to their evil ways, he changed his mind, and he did not carry out the destruction that he had threatened. So how do we reconcile these two things? Passages that say God doesn't change his mind and passages 
that say that God changes his mind. Well, the book of Jeremiah kind of clarifies it for us. In the book of Jeremiah, what we read in Jeremiah chapter 18, verses 7 and 8, is this. If I announce that a certain nation or kingdom is to be uprooted, torn down and destroyed, but then that nation renounces its evil ways, I will not destroy it as I had planned. You see, many times God announces his plans through his prophets to punish a certain people, a certain tribe, a certain city. But he does it with a purpose. He's giving the people a chance to repent. If they do, God may change his mind. What that says to us is that we need to be conscious of our own actions and the way that we interact, the way that we respond to God. Our relationship with him is key. God wants us to listen to him. He wants us to repent of our sin. And the promised punishment for our sin will be forgiven, will be forgotten if we turn to him. Like, follow, and subscribe to this devotional on whatever platform you used to listen to it. Tomorrow, we'll ask the question, how does God test us?